Hi, welcome to the first in a series of videos describing as well as demonstrating the Avaya Breeze platform. My name is Andrew Prokop and I work at Aero Systems Integration as a communications consultant and all around smart guy. You may know me from my many written articles for No Jitter, but I decided to do something a little different this time around. If a picture tells a thousand words, I hope these videos become my virtual novel. The name Breeze may be relatively new, but the technology has been around for a number of years. It began as collaboration environment before being renamed Engagement Development Platform, or EDP for short. At its core, Breeze is a platform to develop sophisticated telephony applications, but it's so much more than that. Built on IBM WebSphere, Breeze applications, or snap-ins as Avaya calls them, can do just about anything you want them to do. In fact, I have written Breeze applications that send emails and text messages, query databases, make recordings, send and receive RESTful web services calls, and implement speech recognition. Avaya provides two methodologies to develop Breeze snap-ins. First, there is a Java software development kit that enables experienced Java programmers to write straight to the Breeze APIs. This is how I began working with the collaboration environment several years ago. Second, there is a drag and drop tool that Avaya calls Engagement Designer. Engagement Designer is in itself a snap-in that invokes the underlying Java APIs. However, Engagement Designer shields the developer from the nitty-gritty Java details and essentially allows anyone who can dream up a workflow to become a developer. In addition to Engagement Designer making it very simple for non-programmers to create powerful applications, the time from idea to prototype to production is significantly reduced. I am not exaggerating when I say Engagement Designer can reduce snap and development time from days to minutes. Okay, that's enough of an introduction. Let's take a first look at writing Breeze applications. For this video and a number of videos that will follow, I will focus exclusively on Engagement Designer. Frankly, it's a lot more exciting than looking at hundreds of lines of cryptic Java code. And while there are some things that you can do with the Java Toolkit that you cannot do with Engagement Designer, the differences in functionality are few. First, I need to show you how to invoke Engagement Designer and some of its associated tools. For that, we begin with System Manager. System Manager is Avaya's centralized management platform for all things including Breeze. This is the main screen for System Manager. Note the entry for Engagement Development Platform. The version of System Manager I am using for this video is one level below the current version, where you would see Breeze instead of EDP. However, the functionality and workflows are identical. To get to the Breeze tools, we click on Engagement Development Platform. This takes you to a screen that allows you to manipulate all sorts of things about Breeze and Breeze servers. For these videos, I will concentrate on just a few aspects. After opening Engagement Development Platform, you are placed on the Cluster Administration screen. Think of a cluster as a collection of Breeze servers. I am using UC Cluster. Let's scroll over and see what tools have been loaded for this Breeze cluster. Notice Design Console URL. By selecting this, I launch Engagement Designer. Allow me to explain what you're seeing. On the left side is a collection of cabinets. If we open up the Telephony Communications cabinet, we see all the tasks associated with managing telephone calls. The same is true for other cabinets. For instance, if I open up Media Communications, I see four tasks that can be used to manage media within a snap-in. Across the top, you will see a menu of options that are used for snap-in development. We have things like new workflow, delete workflows, we're going to talk about a number of these things, validate workflow, import workflow from a file, um, deploy a workflow, a number of other options that will be useful once we get into snap-in development. The big panel on the right is where you create your snap-in. By default, all snap-ins have a start event, variables, and properties. I will address variables and properties in subsequent videos. Start is where a snap-in's workflow begins. There are many ways to trigger start, and over time I will explore most of them. For now, though, we will look at things simplistically and manually start our snap-ins. Are you ready to begin? Great! Let's get started on a very simple snap-in that makes a call, plays a message, and then drops the call. For this, we need to open up Telephony Communications and find Make Call. And it's right there. This, of course, is the task used to launch a new call. We then need something to play the prompt. 
The Play Announcement task is found under Media Communications. At this point, we want to drop the call. And now we want to end this workflow. So we open up the Events cabinet and find End. Okay, let's connect these tasks together for a linear workflow. I go to Start. I allow the blue arrow to appear. Click on it and drag over the connection line until the green box appears around Make Call, and then I let go. I'll do the same for Make Call to Play Announcement, Play Announcement to Drop Call, and then Drop Call to End. Now, are we done? Well, not quite. We haven't said who we want to call or what we want to say. For that, we need, we need to open up the individual tasks and set their properties. I go over to Make Call, I can either right mouse click or I can double click. I will right mouse click and we see properties. If I open up properties, I need to set the calling party. And for my example, I'm going to use 2301. The call ed party, let's do 2304. I'm going to set an arbitrary call ID and I can say OK. Input and output mapping allow you to access data defined outside the task and make data produced within the task available to other tasks. By opening input mapping, you will see the variables that were available as task properties. In future videos, I will explore how these can be mapped, but for now we will work with the hard-coded values I just set for calling party, call ed party, and caller ID. Opening up output mapping, displays the values produced when make call runs. Specifically, we see universal call ID or UCID and status. We need UCID for future operations and need to make it available to other tasks. There are different ways to do this, but the easiest is to simply make a public copy of this data. This is accomplished by clicking on the plus sign, the green plus sign. Notice how we have now created something called make call one output one this data is now publicly available to other tasks let's save this data and move on it's now time to work on the prompt that the call ed party hears let's save that so let's double click play announcement and we see the local properties of the play announcement task for now, I will ignore everything except media URI slash text. Here I will simply type the words I want the call ed party to hear. So, let's say, hi from Breeze. Isn't this really cool? Let's open up input mapping. First, I see the task properties but I also see UCID. This is the call I want to play the prompt on. In this simple workflow, there's only one call, but imagine a workflow that deals with many calls. UCID allows the task to keep them separate, to process each of the calls separately. So where do I find UCD, UCID? Why? It's from the previous make call task. So if I open up make call one, output one, I can map the UCID from the call that we just created to the UCID needed by the prompt. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's save this. There is no output mapping that I need to worry about from play prompt, so I will just ignore that. Let's close this thing out. Opening up drop call doesn't show me much. However, if I open up input mapping, then we see the same UCID is required for drop call, which makes sense. We need to know which call we are dropping. So I will map over the UCID from the make call and then add that to the drop call and we'll save this. We are now ready, ready to run the task. To ensure that I didn't make any mistakes, I will go up to the menu bar and I will choose Validate Workflow. Validate Workflow will go through my workflow 
and ensure or tell me if I have any syntax errors. So if I, it won't tell me if I have logic errors, you know, like programming errors, like I'm doing something I shouldn't do in terms of the logic of the workflow, but it will find any syntax errors. Have I mapped all the things that needed to be mapped? Have I set all the variables that absolutely have to be set? Well, in my case, I did fine, zero errors, zero warnings. But let's have a little fun. Let's go into drop call. Let's go back into input mapping. And I'm going to remove the UCID mapping I just made. Let's save that. There is no mapping. Do you want to save? And I say, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm living dangerously here. Let's go back up to validate the workflow. And it's going to tell me, hey, you didn't map UCID. I need UCID mapped. So let's close that out. Go back into input mapping. Let's remap that. We'll save it. And then we'll hit OK. I will revalidate. OK, perfect. We're back to where we were before, and we are ready to run. Now that the snap and workflow is complete, I need to save and deploy it. So I go over here to save. Once a name, I'm going to call this my uh, make call demo, uh, that seems good enough, make call demo. Although I will correct my call. I'm going to assign it to a directory that I currently use. And I will say save. Oh, it looks like I've already made that, I've already used that one. So we'll call this one make call demo one. Now I need to deploy it. So I come back over here. I say deploy workflow. Here's make call demo one. This is version one. I click OK. Engagement designer will come back and tell me that the workflow has been deployed. To test the snap in, I need to return to System Manager and run another tool on my Breeze cluster. So we'll go back to the Breeze cluster. And this time we select Admin Console URL. Let's wait for it to start. The Admin Console URL has three main sections. Workflows, Instances, and Event Catalog. I will talk about Event Catalog in another video. Today we'll talk about Workflow and I'll show you some things about instances. Working, looking down at workflow, I see my newly deployed snap-in, make call demo one. I will select it, and then I will click on create instance. This invokes the snap-in at the start task. I get a little warning here. This is something I want to talk about later because we're not doing events right now, but I'll say okay. What happens is the instance is created. Oh, and look at this. I have running on my PC here, one X communicator, and I'm logged into 2304, so let's answer that. Hi from Breeze. Isn't this really cool? Oh, we heard the, we saw the make call, we heard the prompt, and we saw the call dropped. <laughs> that was pretty neat, wasn't it? There's one more thing I want you to see in admin console. Let me go back. I'm going to restart my snap-in. So I'll do my create instance. Get the warning that I said we can, we can ignore for this point. I have my ringing call. Now I'm going to click on instances. Make sure I do a refresh here. And I see make call demo. If I click on this, we will see the task actually as it's in progress. So let me come back here. I'm going to answer the call. Notice we're sitting at the make call. I will answer it. Hi from Breeze. Isn't this really cool? It's moved over to the play announcement. Then it moves over to the drop call, and then it goes to end. So when we saw the kind of the yellow orange, that is a task in process. When we see the green, that is a task that has completed. So this is extremely powerful. The ability to dynamically watch workflows in real time or historically, I can go back and close this and 
I can look out, uh, look at the one that I ran uh, earlier. So look at them historically as well. It's extremely powerful. It's actually one of the coolest things about Engagement Designer. And I have personally used this capability to fix quite a few bugs in my Snap-ins logic. And so, you know, we talked about the um, validation to fix the syntax. Well, this is how you can start to fix your logic errors. You know, that's not fixing them for you, but it's showing you what what is going on, what is happening. I can actually open up various uh, of these uh, um, tasks and I see what it was doing at the time of execution and this could be extremely important when you think you're doing something and you really aren't doing what you thought you were doing because the task says no that's not the data that I see this is the data that I see this was meant to be an introduction to Breeze and I hope I accomplished that as you saw there is a lot to this product and I have only scratched the surface Future installments of this video series will explore variables, properties, and quite a few of the many tasks that Engagement Designer provides. If you think this was exciting, just wait until you see what I can do with RESTful Web Services. Trust me, you will be amazed. With that, I'm going to close this out. Thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to Aero Systems Integration YouTube channel for future installments. Bye for now.